Hi guys! So before we get into our seventh monthly crab attack review, I just had a couple of things I want to say. First of all, thank you to everyone who has sent me crab attacks for reviewing. It's really great to see that you guys want advice on how to improve your crab attacks, and I think it's great that we all share our ideas and hopefully inspire others to have better animal care. So I was looking when I began editing this video and there's actually 30 more crab attacks that I have to review. So that'll take us through the beginning of January. So January 1st should be the last one. With that being said, just a reminder, I'm not accepting any more crab attacks for reviewing. However, if you are still looking for ideas on how to improve your crab attack, or you just want to show off how wonderful your crab attack is, still send it to me either on my Instagram or through email. I will look at it and I will review it and I will give you that private review, but it won't be featured here on the channel. So that's it, that's all I wanted to say, so let's get right into the video. So to start off with, our first crab attack is home to four hermit crabs, two large ones and two small ones. It is a 29 gallon tank and the crabs have been owned for three years. So to start off with, this tank has a couple of really nice features. One of those would be the nice deep substrate, and another would be that you can see how nice and humid it is, so no wonder the crabs have lived for three years. The pools have shells and rocks in them for the crabs to easily climb out, and I see that there's a nice variety of fresh food. Although, I don't think Cheerios are the healthiest for hermit crabs. If I were to recommend adding anything to this tank, it would probably be some more hiding places. I see that there's lots of plants, but not really any really dark places for the crabs to hide. 29 gallons is also a really awesome size for hermit crabs because it gives them lots of surface space to molt, but it also has enough height to where you can really add lots of climbing stuff up above. So you could add more of that stuff. And then here are a couple photos of the crabs. This one is a little bit pale, but that might just be his natural coloring. And then the rest of them are all very brightly colored. They just look like nice, healthy, and happy crabs. So the next person recently got seven crabs, and they are doing the post-purchase syndrome method of introducing the crabs into their tank. So basically, post-purchase syndrome is when crabs are overly stressed because they go from a pet store environment that's really bad and then you put them into a perfect tank with perfect conditions and they can't handle the stress of being in such different environments. So this PPS syndrome method means that you're slowly acclimating the crabs to being in the correct environment. So you start off with pet store like conditions and then gradually make them better. So with that being said, the crabs are currently in a 20 gallon, which is too small, but that is closer to the pet store conditions. And then as they acclimate, they will move to a 40 gallon. So here is the crab attack, and I have to say, if I were a hermit crab, I would want to live here. This is pretty much a crab heaven. It has everything that a hermit crab would want and need. It has lots of hiding places. It has moss, which hermit crabs love. There's lots of chola wood, plants to climb on, plastic canvas for climbing, lots and lots of different options. I have to say that the food that these crabs have looks especially good because yes, we can give crabs natural foods like bananas and strawberry and chicken, but that's not exactly what they would be eating in the wild. And a lot of the stuff that they do eat in the wild, we don't as owners normally have access to. So there's actually quite a few different Etsy shops and things like that that sell real raw seafood and those types of things that hermit crabs would actually eat in the wild. So this looks like a really nice variety of those real foods that hermit crabs would be eating in their natural habitat. One thing you may notice about this tank is that the substrate doesn't look deep enough for molting and with the post-purchase syndrome method, of introducing the crabs. This is actually done intentionally. The thought is that you don't want the crabs going down to molt before they are ready, so you make sure that they have lots of good food and good water and you don't make the substrate deep enough for molting until they have that nutrients required to be able to molt correctly. So next we have two hermit crabs that live in an 11 gallon tank. It's an odd size, never heard of that one before. 
And then the crabs are still in painted shells and the owner is concerned because they're not eating or drinking well. So now that I see the tank, the 11 gallons makes a little bit more sense. It's not actually an aquarium, it's a plastic tub. I see that this tank does have fresh and salt water as well as a unique hiding place. I'm not quite sure what that is. And then there's some shells and a couple little climbing nets, although there is some stuff that does need to be improved in this tank. Firstly, the heat source definitely is not big enough. It's this little tiny mat just on the side of the tank, and you'd actually want your heat source to run along the whole back of the tank in order for it to be enough to properly heat the crab habitat. Secondly, looking at the substrate, it seems to be pretty dry and not humid enough. So those two things combined, the lack of heat and the lack of humidity can really, really affect hermit crabs and how active they are. So if they're not eating and they're not drinking, most likely it's because something in their environment isn't correct. And in this case, I'd really think that would be the heat and the humidity. You'd also want to add in more climbing and hiding spaces for the crabs to be able to become more comfortable in their home and give them more enrichment so that they can be more active. So next we have one crab that lives in a 20 gallon tank. There's six inches of substrate and there is a 12 hour day and night cycle on the lights and that is actually, it's not necessary but it is really good and studies have shown that having a day and night cycle helps to make the crabs more active. So there's a couple things about this tank that I really do like. One of those would be the nice deep substrate and I also like how we kind of have a very thick jungle-like area where there's plants and moss and a pot to hide in and then you move over to the other side where the food and water dishes are. That's actually how I keep my tank and I kind of prefer it that way. I think it's more natural like in the wild the crabs would live in the trees and then kind of move over to the beach when they want to find water and food and kind of scavenge. So here is the crab and it looks like a very nice crab, nice coloring, nice and healthy, although you definitely do want to have at least one friend for it and with this being a 20 gallon, you can definitely get another crab as a companion. My crabs really, really are social and they really do need that interaction with others of their species in order to be completely happy. Mine practically do everything together. You never see just one crab on its own. They always travel in groups, eat in groups, sleep in groups. They just love each other. The other thing I would recommend adding is some deeper water dishes. These ones here are not big enough for this large crab to fully submerge, and you're definitely going to want to get more shells. You only have one here in the tank, and that isn't a type of shell that hermit crabs will normally change into. Up next, we have a 10 gallon tank with sand and eco earth mixed for substrate, and two of the crabs have been owned for a year and there was recently a third crab added into the colony. So here is the tank, and I think this is very nice. It's similar to the last one in the sense that there's kind of the jungle, thick vegetation side that has plants. I see chola wood, lots of moss. It's nice and thick, lots of hiding and climbing options for the crabs. And then you go to the other side and there's a coconut hut for hiding in, water dishes, and the food dishes. And similar to the last one, I only see one extra shell, which definitely isn't enough for three hermit crabs in here. Um, it could possibly be behind all of the vegetation here, and if so, that's fine. But if this is the only shell, then you will definitely want to get more, and you could actually put in a moss pit up above kind of where the coconut hut is, and that would utilize more space as well. Lastly, while this is a great use of space for a 10 gallon, 10 gallons will not be large enough to sustain your three crabs long term. It will work temporarily, but you are going to need to upgrade as the crabs grow. For a long time, I had three crabs in a 10 gallon, and as they got bigger, I could very much tell that it was time to upgrade. So depending on the size of your crabs, you may need to upgrade soon, or if they're really tiny, this tank might work for a while. So the next crab habitat is very similar to the last in the sense that it's again three hermit crabs that live in a 10 gallon tank. So not quite big enough, but might work short term if the crabs are small. And then the substrate is a mixture of eco earth 
and hermit crab sand. And if you've seen my video on substrate, you'll know that I do not recommend hermit crab sand because it is not as safe as play sand. I know some people still use it. I'm not sure why because it is much more expensive than the play sand. So although they are using hermit crab sand, one thing I do like is that the substrate is nice and deep. Although you can see that this 10 gallon is not utilizing all the space the way that the last one was, there's pretty much no climbing things in here. So that could be one thing that could really be improved. You could add in nets or fake plants or wood that you find and boil that is safe for hermit crabs. There's endless possibilities of all of the climbing stuff that you could add into this tank. Although there is a good variety of shells in this tank, and there is quite a few shells, I would recommend watching my video all about shells because some of the ones in here are not ideal for hermit crabs and the majority of crabs won't wear them. So you could check out that video and see if your species of crab will wear those shells. And you definitely want to have a fresh water and a salt water dish that are deep enough for the crabs to fully submerge their bodies in. So this water bowl is not going to work. I would definitely recommend getting some deeper water dishes. All in all, this tank is a good start. The main idea is definitely there and you have all the pieces. It's just a matter of building on those pieces and improving. Up next, we have a 55 gallon tank, which is the same size tank that I have. And it houses four hermit crabs, which is a really nice size that gives each crab over 10 gallons a piece. And there are 11 inches of substrate. Again, that's a really nice depth. And there are also lots of hiding and climbing options for the crabs. So here is the crab habitat, and I am loving the 11 inches of substrate. That is a really nice depth for these crabs. I know a lot of my viewers and subscribers are younger and do not have a lot of money to be spending on their crabs. But I do have to say that if you take the time and you invest into these crab attacks, there are some amazing things that you can build. And this tank is a great example. I mean, there's just plants everywhere, hiding places everywhere. It's really quite incredible. And again, you don't have to spend a lot of money on your crab attack. And if you saw my last video, I actually built a crab attack out of just spare items in my house. It didn't look amazing, but it does get the job done. And also, I wouldn't recommend making your crab habitat this extravagant unless it is the end result crab habitat that you're wanting. So the end result is if your crabs end up being jumbo size, if they live with you for 10, 20, 30 years, they're going to need at least 10 gallons per crab. And so with this tank being 55 gallons and four crabs, that is a good amount of space and this can be an end result for those crabs. But for the majority of people, you are going to need to continue upgrading like those 10 gallons that we saw earlier. One thing I find particularly interesting in this tank is the pools. I've never seen any like this before. So it's one bigger container with two smaller ones inside of it and then a bridge. Just thought it was really creative because I've never seen any like that before. Now for our last crab habitat in this video. This is a 10 gallon with two hermit crabs. And like a lot of people, they were kind of tricked by the pet store and originally purchased all the incorrect supplies. And after doing some research, they figured out that stuff was incorrect and the tank is currently in progress of getting the correct supplies. So right off the bat, you can tell that we have some nice deep substrate. There was a good heater on the side and this tank looks nice and moist and humid. Now I do want to talk about this lid for a moment because I think it's very creative. So it looks like they did the method of taking plastic wrap and taping it down so that it keeps in the humidity. And then they also cut a little area in the corner where some airflow can still go through. And that's a really good option because you do want the crabs to have some airflow and then they're using the book to cover up that area for when they don't want the airflow. With the corner being cut the way it is, they can really control how much airflow is going through the tank and how much humidity is either staying in or escaping out the top. On the inside of this tank, we have two water bowls, some nice fresh food, there's a good variety of shells that the crabs actually will use, most of those kinds there. Then we have some chola wood and a climbing net. 
I don't really see any hiding places, but like they said, they're still working on the tank. In the meantime, they could put in something like a jar or a pot, just to give the crabs some sort of dark area for hiding. The only thing I could critique about this tank is I would take the sponges out of the water. They don't really aid in the humidity and they become moldy very, very easily. So they're more of a negative and not a positive. And then you could use something like fake plants or rocks to put in the bottom and still allow the crabs to get in and out. But overall, this is a great start for this crab attack. Alright guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found some inspiration for your crab attacks. Once again, thank you to all of my subscribers and all of the people that have sent in their crab attacks for review. If you did enjoy the video, make sure that you leave it a like and make sure that you're subscribed to see all of my animal related videos. So, see you next time. Bye!